One day, Alex received a call from his grandparents who work as farmers in a village. In the call, Alex's grandparents sound sad and told him that most of their crops had wilted due to the pests and the weather problem. Alex was upset too as he knew that the crops were his grandparents' effort. He comforted them and promised that we'll try to figure out a way to help them. During the weekend, Alex went to the supermarket to buy some groceries for his family. In the supermarket, he saw there are two types of maize, which are the normal maize and the maize with GMO labeling. It was the first time that he saw fruits with GMO labeling. He felt curious and bought both types of the maize to see the difference between them. Upon reaching home, Alex put the maize and the groceries in the kitchen. After a few days, he realized that the maize with GMO labeling still fresh and looked good while the normal maize started to rot. He felt curious and wants to find out about it. He searched online for the information on GM foods. He saw an interesting video with title, We Are Eating Mutants, on YouTube. Alex was shocked upon seeing the video as it is impossible for us to eat mutants. Then, he clicked into the video to watch it. We are eating mutants. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Dr. Jean's classroom. Today, we are going to learn about genetic modification. Do you know we are actually eating mutants in our daily life? Now, let's have a look at it. Genetic modification, GM, is a technology which involves the inserting of foreign DNA into the genome of an organism. This technique is called genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology. Foods which are produced from genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology are called genetically modified food, GM food. Once the foreign DNA is inserted into the plants or animals, they are called mutants. This is the reason why we are eating mutants. Some common examples of GM foods are papaya, golden rice, tomato, fish, foods that can be made from maize, such as cereal and corn chips, as well as foods that can be made from soybean, such as soy milk, tofu, and tempeh. These are the mutants that we consume in our daily lives. So, how are GM crops made? Let me explain about it. The first step is identification. For identification, scientists will identify the traits that they want the plant to have. For example, traits that are resistance to pests, drought, pesticide, or herbicides. Then, they will identify an organism, such as animal, plant, or microorganisms, which already have the traits within its gene. This organism is known as donor cell. The second step is isolation. In this step, the gene of interest is then isolated from the donor cell. The gene of interest is cut by using an enzyme named restriction enzyme from donor cell. The gene of interest is then produced. The third step is insertion. Usually, the circular plasmid from bacteria cell is used as a vector. The plasmid of the bacteria cell is cut by using the same restriction enzyme, which is used to cut the gene of interest. After that, scientists will use tools to insert the gene of interest into the plasmid. The plasmid with gene of interest is then produced. The fourth step is transformation. The plasmid which carry the gene of interest is then introduced into bacteria cell and allows to multiply. The transformed bacteria cell is then attached to the plant cell and begins the process of gene transfer into the plant cell. A copy of new DNA which carries the gene of interest 
is transferred into the genome of the plant cell. The fifth step is screening. For screening, the plant cell is being screened on a nagar plate containing antibiotics. This is to identify and determine whether they have taken up the foreign DNA, which is the desired gene. Usually, only a small fraction of the plant cell will take up the gene of interest and able to survive. The last step is growing. Scientists will first use the tissue culture technique to grow the new plant in laboratory scale to ensure it adopts the desired trait. If it is successful, they will grow and monitor the new plants in greenhouses and then in small field tests. After this, the new plants are moving into larger field tests. These GM crops produced are pest resistant, drought resistant, pesticides resistant, and herbicides resistant. The seeds from these plants are known as GM seeds. There are some advantages of GM foods. First of all, GM foods have longer shelf life compared to non-GM foods. For example, on the first day that we bought the foods, both the GM foods and non-GM foods are fresh and look good. After one week, the GM foods are still good in condition. However, the non-GM foods were rotten and cannot be eaten anymore. This is because the foreign DNA, which has been inserted into the GM foods, help in slowing down the aging and microbial decay. This is the reason why GM foods have longer shelf life. Next, GM foods are cheaper than non-GM foods. GM crops are often grown in a large scale, and they can be harvested in a shorter time compared to non-GM crops. Hence, the production yield of these crops is higher, and more foods can be produced. Upon this, the price of the foods, which are made from GM crops are cheaper than the foods, which are made from non-GM crops. Furthermore, food shortage problem can be reduced. GM crops are modified to be pest resistant, drought resistant, pesticides and herbicides resistant. Less pesticides and herbicides are being used upon genetic modification. This would give the farmers a higher yield and ensure that there is sufficient food supply for the consumers. Thus, food shortage problem can be reduced. Now, do you know why we are eating mutants? After watching the video, Alex had an idea. He found out that this is the best way to help his grandparents. He then introduced GM seeds to his parents. Alex's father and mother agreed on it and they decided to buy some GM seeds for Alex's grandparents. Alex bought the GM seeds online and it will deliver to his grandparent in two weeks. Two weeks later, the GM seeds were delivered to Alex's grandparents' house. Several months later, Alex and his parents went to visit his grandparents to see the crops. They were happy to see that all the crops that his grandparents planted grew healthily. By looking at the smiles on his grandparents' face, Alex knew that he had made the right decision. He was very happy as he managed to help his grandparents to solve the problem. And at the same time he learned something new. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel.